Thank you, Mr. President. Are we currently in a quorum call? We are not. We are not. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I wanted to talk for just a few minutes, um, if I could, about a bill that is coming to the floor. It's called the PACT Act. And this is something that those of us at Judiciary Committee have worked on for quite a period of time. And we had worked diligently through what we thought was a prescribed and agreed to process. And we are finding out that the majority leader is pretty much forcing this issue to the floor this week for a vote. And he is calling it, and I'm going to quote here, the most ambitious and important expansion of veteran health care benefits that we have seen in a decade, end quote. Now, Senators Schumer and Tester have indeed put forth a bill that when you look at it, when you hear the intent, um, a first glance at it, you say, oh, this is exactly what we need to help our service members. And indeed, we all are just so grateful for the men and women that have served in this country, that have worn that uniform. But there is a lot to be said for bringing measures to the floor for passage when they're ready, when there has been agreement on critical importance. As the majority leader said, the biggest expansion of benefits that we've seen in decades. Now, many of us have worked for quite a period of time on the issue of toxic exposure and have worked on how best to make certain that when we address this, that Mr. President, you're going to get care to the veteran in a timely manner. They're not going to have to wait. They're going to receive the care that they need. Uh, so it is frustrating to me, as it is to many of my colleagues, to think about what could have been accomplished had the majority leader just done what he had promised to do and had allowed a thorough amendment process. We should all share the goal of making certain that legislation we pass that deals with our veterans, that deals with our men and women in uniform, is going to be a promise fulfilled and not a false promise or not a frustration. Yesterday at Veterans Affairs Committee, we had a hearing with our VA secretary. We've had a terrible problem with case backloads on benefits and health services. Currently, the case backload is about 188,000. That's the backlog. That's what needs to be worked through. And in passing this bill that is before us today, the estimate is that we're going to add about a million cases to that. Now, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a veteran who has suffered and is suffering with toxic exposure and has a rare cancer, has a respiratory disease, a cardiovascular disease, and is needing access to care. What you want is to be able to get that care. What you don't want to do is have to wait for that care. And that is why we needed to go through this amendment process to address this issue of how a veteran is going to be able to access that care in a timely manner when they need the care. Because with some of these rare diseases, days and weeks and months become a life or death issue. So the access is important. The amendments that we proposed were 
as non-controversial as you can get um, in these days. Now, the amendment that I had, which was one of the two amendments that we were to have on the Republican side, by the way, I said that two amendments, that's what we were going to be allowed. It wasn't an open amendment process. Two amendments, two things that would have improved the bill. I proposed an amendment that would have eliminated arbitrary bureaucratic hurdles for toxic exposed veterans, would have eliminated this from the long wait times at their local VA hospitals and clinics. Basically, it would have been that express pass that they need because it would have allowed them to seek care in the community if they could get it there faster than they could through the VA. Now, Mr. President, the reason for this is because I spend a lot of time talking with veterans in Tennessee. I have veterans who are a part of our team. They talk to me about the issues that many of their, their friends and their neighbors are experiencing or people that served in their unit or their battalion and how they need this care. Right now, if you are in the Nashville area, which is where many of our retirees from Fort Campbell and the 101st go for their care, if you're there and you're going to go to the VA over at Vanderbilt there in Nashville and request an appointment, your wait is 72 days. What if you're a veteran and you have a rare respiratory condition that is caused from a burn pit or from toxic exposure or you've developed a cancer and you are needing care. Do you really want to have to wait two and a half months to be able to see a general practitioner for an appointment that will refer you to a specialist. Do we think that is fair to our veterans? Is that the way to treat them? To say, pick up the phone and call, and then we'll get you an appointment. By the way, it's going to be 72 days on a wait time, and then we'll start the clock to try to get you into community care to get you to a specialist. My amendment would basically have said, Veterans can take that card out of their wallet, their VA card. They can show it at a care facility in their community and they can get the care they need then. You're eliminating wait times for them. You're eliminating long lines. You're eliminating the frustration and the fear and the anxiety that comes is every day you think this cancer is growing and I'm being denied care because of a bureaucratic process. Our veterans ought not to have to deal with that bureaucratic process. They've waited a long time. So this amendment would have improved the bill. And I have it right here in my hands. It is really very simple, Mr. President. Section 121, subtitle C, other health care matters. That's what is underneath. Requirement to provide care under veterans community care program for toxic exposed veterans. And then it goes through, it strikes an or, inserts a semicolon, strikes the period at the end of the sentence, and inserting or, and adds, the covered veteran is a toxic exposed veteran. Pretty specific. It elevates the care that they need so that they do not have to wait because they have waited long enough. And they don't want to have to wait until the VA hires enough people 
to do this. Right now, if the VA is going to hire new nurses or doctors, you know how long it takes them to get them hired? 97 days. Do they have what they need to meet this load? No, they do not. Now, in the private sector, they can make these hires in about 16 days, and they do. And we've discussed these hiring process changes that need to be made in order to facilitate this care. Now, some have said, well, you know, if we allow community care, in essence, that is privatizing, privatizing the VA. No, it is not. It is not privatizing. What it is doing is saying the VA is seeking a better way to deliver a service in a timely manner to the people who have been promised the service. That is what the amendment would do. It would allow them, it would allow them to avoid that bureaucratic process, to take that VA card, to go get the care they need that day. But no, because we have some who are so fearful that the VA or the federal government might lose some of their power, some of their control over your life. They will not agree to that. Now, the fiscal year 21 NDAA included my K2 Veterans Toxic Exposure Accountability Act requiring a 180-day study by DOD on toxic exposures at K2 to demonstrate more clearly the associations between exposure to toxic substances and negative health consequences experienced by K2 veterans. That is something that had a tremendous effect on many of our military men and women at Fort Campbell and there with the 160th, with the 101st. And I've worked with Senator Tillis on the toxic exposure in the American Military Act, the TEAM Act, which was largely included in the PACT Act. And I've worked with Senator Sullivan on the Veterans Burn Pit Exposure Recognition Act, which would concede exposure to a list of toxic substances, hazards, and chemicals common to burn pits for veterans who deployed to certain covered locations within certain corresponding periods. So I thank my colleagues who have put the effort in on this. I will say that I'm very disappointed that my colleagues from New York and Montana decided no amendments. Senator Moran's amendment would have adjusted how that wait time is calculated to be more fair to our veterans. My amendment would have allowed them to immediately get the care they need, life-saving care. Life-saving care. It would have allowed that medi immediate access. But we have chosen, it appears, or the majority leader and the chairman have chosen to move forward without an amendment process that would be more fair and more responsive to our veterans. And at the same time, they're daring us to vote no on this bill. I would challenge them. Take a moment and let's return to the agreed to amendment process and improve this for the sake, for the sake and the livelihood of many of our veterans who are experiencing the effects of toxic exposure. I yield the floor.